everyone, my name is Lisa Kelly and I'm a plant pathologist with DAF in Toowoomba. We're here today in a crop of mung beans in southern Queensland, Kingsthorpe. And today I'll be talking to you about the disease Fusarium wilt. Fusarium wilt is a fungal disease. It's caused by two different species, so Fusarium oxysporum and Fusarium solani. Both of these species can survive in a wide range of habitats, so both of those can survive as saprophytes, just living on dead material. Both of those can be pathogens infecting specific hosts, such as mung bean. And they can also both be endophytes, which means they can be surviving on the outside of plants or inside of plants without causing any disease symptoms at all. Uh, essentially, this means that they can be surviving between cropping seasons on other hosts and in the soil as well. Fusarium wilt can cause great losses. We've seen up to 80% yield losses in paddocks that have had the disease. And not only in a single season, but because the pathogens survive in the soil for a long time, they're also impacting subsequent crops. So the first thing you could look for is looking for wilted plants that may be a little stunted. Secondly, are the leaves of those plants yellowing or having leaf chlorosis, or are they dying as well? Thirdly, the plants may be dying altogether, which may be a result of the disease. Fourthly, you could look at the plant roots. So are the roots looking a bit rotted, or does the, the rot extend into the basal tissues as well? And last of all, if you split the stem open with a fusarium wilt, you'll notice some browning of the internal tissues. So the disease tends to be worse in paddocks that have some kind of stress. It may be in paddocks that have had high root lesion nematode numbers, paddocks that have had a history of herbicide use and also compaction in the field. Pretty much any type of stress, so it may be too much water, too little water. Uh, it can also be environmental, so if you have really hot weather for a few days and then some rainfall. The species that cause fusarium wilt they produce special structures called chlamydospores that will survive in the soils uh, for years. We don't know exactly how long they survive, but it could be a decade or longer. Additionally, these species uh, can survive in the root tissues of other hosts. So essentially that means that if you've had this disease in your paddock, they may be surviving in the roots of other hosts until you then replant mung beans again. We're standing here today in a paddock that the Mungbin Agronomy Project, funded through the Grains Research Development Corporation, have funded in a trial that we put down in early January. So this trial was aimed at trying to understand the different varietal tolerances to fusarium. We are seeing differences across the varieties. It's interesting, the Onyx AU, so that's actually a black gram variety, not a mung bean variety. It's showing the highest level of tolerances to Fusarium. The next variety that's just showing the most tolerance would be Opal AU, followed by Jade AU, and then Crystal seems to have the lowest tolerance to Fusarium in that trial. Once you've got this disease in your paddock, unfortunately there's not a lot that you can do to try and minimise the impact of that disease. Uh, essentially what you really want to do is prevent the disease coming into your paddock in the first place. Some of the ways you could do that is by making sure that you're not growing mung beans followed by mung beans and then followed by mung beans, which will be building up that pathogen in the soil really quickly. Uh, another option is to make sure you're cleaning down your machinery, your footwear, so using the come clean, go clean practices, which will really minimise that spread of the infected soil to new areas. So the disease can spread from paddock to paddock or farm to farm through the movement of infected soil. So essentially that means on footwear, it may mean on machinery, crop debris that's moving around. The disease can also move from an infected paddock to a healthy paddock through the movement of soil in water, so whether that's irrigation water or flooded water. If you've seen the disease in your crop last season, I would be wary about replanting mung beans in that same paddock again the following season. What we would advise is if you've had disease in your paddock, I would avoid replanting mung beans in that same paddock for at least three years. We've 
notice that although other crops don't show symptoms of the disease when they're uh, infected with these pathogens, the pathogens do survive in the roots of those crops. We did find that in sorghum, the pathogen didn't survive as well in those root tissues. So maybe that may indicate to us that perhaps sorghum may be a better rotation choice alongside mung beans in our cropping rotations. To help us manage this disease in the long term, I guess initially we want to be able to identify this disease in the paddock. So if you've had this disease, you know you know what symptoms it has now, just be on the lookout for this disease. Secondly, we want to be practicing good cropping rotations. So having that good break between mung bean crops and not building up the disease in your system. The come clean, go clean strategy is going to be really important to minimise the spread of this disease from paddock to paddock and then essentially communicating. If you've been seeing lots of disease or seeing some management practices that you think are really working, we'd like to hear about that.